Now is Trump 2020 senior advisor Mercedes Schlapp. We're going to talk about this and a whole lot more. Mercedes, thank you so much for being here on this Saturday. We appreciate it. Uh, let's thank first you. begin with the Atlantic article and the reporting that's being done here at the Fox News Channel. Specifically, I'd like you to take a listen to what uh, correspondent Jennifer Griffin said this morning to Neil Cavuto about her reporting. I can tell you that my, my sources are unimpeachable. I feel very confident with what uh, we have reported at Fox. Um, not every line of the Atlantic article was, did I confirm, but I would say that um, most of the, the descriptions and the quotes in that Atlantic article, um, I did find people who were able to confirm. President Trump on Twitter has called for the firing of Jennifer Griffin. Why? Well, first of all, I think you see that the story is fake. I mean, you're talking about here that, you know, I'm going to add to the number of 11 people on the record, former administration officials who have worked closely with the president, uh, who know that, that this is not an accurate story. I've been in the room with the president when he's made calls to service members, to military families, to veterans. Uh, and it And for him, his goal has always been complete respect for our veterans, for our military officials. You can just even see it in his own actions, where he has been focused on authorizing historic levels of military spending, about $738 billion, and also a historic pay raise for our troops. The president is committed to our military. He's committed to our veterans. I've seen it firsthand when he has called families who have lost loved ones who have served in the military. But again, why call for the firing of a reporter who has an impeccable record? Look, I have great respect for for Jennifer. You know, I think that it's incredibly frustrating sometimes when you have certain people who are out to get the president. What I'm saying is it could be some of these former administration officials, as the president has uh, talked about, these disgruntled employees. And so I can tell you what I've seen personally in the Oval Office where the president has made these calls to military families. And his commitment is clear when you see his record on ensuring that the military has the resources that they need and that our veterans are well taken care of, unlike what we saw under the Obama-Biden administration. And I want to move on here because we, we did bring you on here as well to talk about this Women for Trump, a bus tour that you're on. Um, you're going to battleground states and you're getting out there. Uh, can you kind of explain exactly what it is that you've been doing? Well, once we hit that 100 day mark, we had we have two buses that are on the road during through Election Day. We've got the Women for Trump bus tour and our Team Trump bus tour, and we are traveling across the country. I have been personally to Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Iowa, New Hampshire, Maine, Arizona, just to name some of the states that I have visited. And there's one common factor in what I, in what I see, this great enthusiasm for President Trump. Uh, and these field offices, many run by women, filled with women who are making phone calls, who are are uh, knocking door to door, be talking about why it's so critical to reelect President Trump. So I have to tell you, just being on the ground, you absolutely see this enthusiasm factor for the president and as it's reflected in the polls as well. And the president really does need women voters um, this time around in a big way, but he is struggling here. And if you take a look at the Grinnell National Poll of women voters and what it says, it says that he is actually way behind uh, former Vice President Biden here. You see that 64 percent to 31 percent. Um, first of all, I, I can't imagine that you're really on board with this poll, but also what is it that you're doing when you're out there on this Women for Trump tour trying to talk to them and help them make the decision that you're hoping that they will make? Absolutely. Well, there's two issues that keep uh, popping up as I'm speaking with uh, and listening to the women who are on the ground. Definitely, it's the economic comeback. It's a fact that we're seeing the relief that the president has provided under the Paycheck Protection Program during this global pandemic that's impacted so many small businesses, women small businesses across the country. Also being able to talk about the fact that we've seen in August 1.5 4 million jobs created and the fact that the unemployment numbers continue to drop despite the artificial interruption of the COVID. Uh, you're, you're talking about 8.4 percent 
also a decrease of unemployment uh, for women, especially veterans, blacks, and Latinos. The other issue that keeps popping up is obviously law and order. It's safe communities. They're seeing what's happened in these Democrat-run cities like Portland, and the fact that it took for Joe Biden several weeks to even address the issue of condemning the violence on the street when he saw falling poll numbers. And for them, they want a president of law and order, someone who's able to provide the federal assistance needed in these cities, as we saw what the president did in his immediate action in Kenosha, Wisconsin. So for them, those are the two issues that are very much resonating in the suburban areas. And we go out and talk about the president's record of strength and compare that to Joe Biden and how he, as a weak candidate, has decided to align himself to the far left, which of course would lead to increased taxes that would, that would definitely impact over 82% of Americans. And that's very concerning to women when they start seeing that he has made this decision not to run in the center, but to run along the far there's, left agenda yep. with Senator there's Bernie a lot Sanders to pack in and there. the squad. 58 days, Mercedes. There's a lot to pack in there. I know. Okay. Thank you so much for joining us on this Thank Saturday. Thank you so much. Take care.